Hey everyone, Nathaniel Ruffle Jance here. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe for more content. Be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway as well through the Gleam that I link down in the description. Now, um, I first off want to apologize uh, to anyone that I might be about to offend. I want to apologize in general to uh, just my fans because I usually don't cover topics like this, but I got to be completely honest. I'm getting really, really tired of seeing some of this stuff, and I'm going to be talking about outrage culture. Now, I am well aware that uh, there is a lot of wrong going on in the world, and maybe I'm the person who should least talk about it. I am a straight, white, privileged male. I grew up in, you know, uh, I wasn't in a broken home. I had a nice family. I had a nice life growing up. I have a nice life right now. I'm a, I'm literally a YouTuber trying to live his dream here. I have my own house. I have my own, you know, studio built. I have children who um, I would argue are probably also privileged to live the life they're living. And I understand that my perspective on life is not going to be the same as someone who has been um, demoralized their whole life, who has been told they're not good enough because of the color of their skin, who's been told they're not good enough because of their religion or their race, or have been demoralized because of whatever gender they happen to be, um, or whatever gender they're choosing to be. I think that, uh, I cannot properly relate to anyone who is, you know, gay or lesbian, who is a trans, a trans person, um, I can't relate directly to anyone who is obviously a different color skin than I am, um, a different ethnic background than me. Uh, and likewise, I, I would argue a lot of them also can't relate to me. So I go into this with the understanding that everyone is different and it's impossible for me to relate to people that go through different struggles and deal with different things in life than I do. Uh, likewise, I don't expect them to understand any of my own struggles or any of the things I go through. Uh, this isn't to say that woe is me and that I'm living a worse life than other people. This is just me pointing out that they can't understand my life and I can't understand theirs. And we'll never completely see eye to eye on things because we grew up differently. That's just the way the world works. But I can agree in many ways that there's a lot wrong in this world. That there is a lot of racism, there is a lot of bigotry, there is a lot of sexism, uh, there is a lot of uh, people um, not being very accepting of, of those that you know are transgender or, or, or something like that. I understand that this is a problem. I don't feel it's a problem personally with me, but uh, it is a problem in general in society and definitely in the video game sphere. But I also think that there is a lack of understanding of how other people grew up a lack of understanding of why people might feel the way they feel. And I think that it's leading to a lot of outrage. And I am getting kind of sick of the outrage culture because what it is showing to me isn't that there is not messed up things said and done by different people. I'm sure I've said messed up things in the past that people didn't do it. It's that people feel like no one can grow from their mistakes. No one's able to learn, right? There's no more learning, forgiving, um, allowing a person to potentially get better from their mistakes. No, all of it is, no, you made a mistake. Oh, you've made some repeated mistakes. It's impossible for you to mean anything you say about being sorry about it or any of this. We just have to be angry. It's all your fault. It's PewDiePie's fault that someone went and shot up a bunch of people at a church. Like, that's, that's totally PewDiePie's fault, right? Like... It, it's it's frustrating to see the outrage culture that exists in the video game sphere. And there's two reasons I'm talking about this. And one of them actually has at least some relation to Nintendo. Uh, because Ronda Rousey uh, is one of the voice actors in Mortal Kombat 11 uh, for a semi-popular um, character. And Kotaku put up an article on it here that we're going to just briefly skim through and I'm going to explain why I have a problem with articles like this and why I have a problem with another particular situation that takes place at a, at a place that is far worse than I realized. And I probably am burning every single bridge I, I had at that outlet that I'm about to talk about. But I really don't care because I'm, I'm sick of this stuff. And it's going to keep popping up. It's not going anywhere. We're in 2019 and this stuff's getting worse and worse and worse. And no, folks, I'm not some like staunch Republican over here or staunch liberal. Uh, I wouldn't call myself a centrist. I probably mean, lean uh, more left than I do right. But it's still, 
doesn't matter. There's a reason we haven't talked about this stuff because it is controversial, but I don't care. I, I need to say something. It, it's been long enough. So uh, let's get into this Kotaku article about Ronda Rousey being in Mortal Kombat 11. Right off the bat, you could tell there's obviously a strong hatred towards Ronda Rousey uh, just in the title. You know, Ronda Rousey being in Mortal Kombat 11 is bullshit. Um, and I'm going to warn right now, we're going to be going over some topics that some people might find uncomfortable. And I understand if that makes you want to unsubscribe. But this needs to be talked about because this is this is happening. This is at Kotaku. And it's happening at another outlet too. Um, but So it says, Ronda Rousey Trailblazer, UFC Hall of Famer and WWE star. I uh, forgot a couple of her accomplishments. She shared an inflammatory conspiracy video about the 2012 Sandy Hook massacre to her millions of Twitter followers. Um, she did. She did share a conspiracy video. Um, and she, uh, you know, did have issues with a transgender MMA fighter, Fallon Fox. Not an issue with her being transgendered. That wasn't what Ronda Rousey had a problem with. Ronda Rousey's problem was trying to have a fair and competitive balance in the women's division and questioning whether or not someone who is transgender really equals a fair and balanced, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, we'll get into it. it. It's explained a little bit further here. Um, so it says, you know, so the, the Sandy Hook massacre thing, we'll go over that as well. Um, you know, and then made trans misogynistic, I can't even say it, and outright asinine comments about transgender MMA fighter Fallon Fox. Again, I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, and as of Mortal Kombat 11, she's the voice of an iconic character, Sonya Blade. Let's take a moment to consider how messed up that is. First off, I mean, we all know why she's the voice of Sonya Blade. It's marketing, right? Um, even though Ronda Rousey isn't as relevant as she once was, at the time that she was picked for the part, she was probably still undefeated in the UFC. Um, and one of the biggest stars in the UFC and all that jazz. So like she was picked for marketing purposes. Um, but whatever, let's, let's continue. Cause we are living in a different world today than I grew up in. A lot of things I said, a lot of dumb things I said in the past, a lot of dumb things I believed in the past, um, aren't on the internet for everyone to consume. I basically grew up right before social media started like facebook like the myspace was a thing but it wasn't really like this thing you update all the time uh a lot of people just used it to listen to music um questionably if it was legal or not uh and then facebook came around for me in about 2005 so um i didn't grow up as a, a younger person with social media and that's why even to this day i don't feel the need to have to constantly use social media and share every aspect about my life um and that's important to know because today Kids are more likely to anything they believe at the time to spout it off on the internet and it can come back to bite them a decade or two later even if they no longer believe in those stupid remarks. Um, that's important here because a lot of this outrage is the belief that people can't grow and learn. Um, even though most of us that have grown and learned it just didn't say the stupid things that we used to believe publicly. Because as you gain more knowledge, you obviously uh, gain more um, sense of the world and sense of your place in it. Anyway, so it goes, in 2013, Rousey shared a conspiracy video regarding the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting that claimed 26 lives, including 20 children. She did. She actually did share that conspiracy video. Um, I'm going to be I'm gonna be straight up with you. I have watched conspiracy videos on, on the Sandy Hook shooting as well. In fact, I've watched conspiracy videos on a lot of different things. The reason that I watch conspiracy videos seems to be the same reason that Ronda Rousey did. Now, whether or not she should have been more responsible in sharing that, especially to be sensitive to the families at the time, that is a debate. Um, but I do think that she didn't mean anything bad by it, per se. And the reason I say that is because the same reason I watch it is you want to try to gather as much information as you can. Um, news stations have been caught lying to you. Fox News, CNN, and the rest have been caught lying in the past. Um, that doesn't mean that you should believe a bunch of these crazy crackpot theories out there. But what is interesting when you watch some of these conspiracy videos is they might bring up some facts of the situation that are, are being ignored by the news. Uh, and that is why I watch the videos because I feel like you can glean some information from those videos. Um, obviously people are going to believe the theories at times. I don't, I don't necessarily believe them all the time. Uh, but I still think it's important to just kind of broaden your mind and, and gather as much facts about a situation you really care about instead of just getting all your information from one outlet. As an example, regardless of what I report on about Nintendo from this channel, you should be fact-checking me. You should be checking my sources. You should be checking other YouTubers out. Don't just get your information from me. Get it from other people. I encourage you to. Do it. Um, expand your knowledge because I don't know everything and I do get things wrong. So, 
Um, I always encourage people to uh, to do that. I, I got things wrong about the master system and the Mega Drive in a recent video. So like, do your research. Like it's okay to get information from multiple places, and it's okay for Ronda Rousey to watch a conspiracy video to try to glean more information about a given situation. A situation, by the way, she never actually stated that that was what happened. She just said it kind of makes you think, which it does. Conspiracy videos do make you think. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, uh, but because of how many followers she have, there is something that you know maybe subconsciously she'd be like, ah, should I put this out there? The family is going to be uh, hurt by this. That that is something that maybe should have crossed her mind, but whatever. So again, I'm not saying that it was wasn't a mistake to post that video to her Twitter, but I also don't think it makes her a piece of crap for doing it. Right? It'd be different if she came out and said, I fully believe this. Check it out. Like she, that's not how she acted. So. Um, as it goes on, uh, people called her out about it and she said, I just figured asking questions and doing research is more patriotic than blindly accepting what you're told. Uh, again, I agree with that stance. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking, asking questions and trying to get more information. That's a lot different than saying, oh, Sandy Hook was by the government. Like, no, it's a, hey, look, I'm just trying to get more information on this topic. We shouldn't just believe everything we're told. How many times have you been told not to believe everything you see on the internet? <laughs> you shouldn't believe everything you see on cable TV either. Let me tell you. Um, moving on. Uh, and then it says, The following day she made another tweet saying she never meant to insult or hurt anyone, which she probably didn't. And I, that's where the hindsight comes in. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe I should have put that out there because it could have hurt some of the families. Um, so, yeah. like, But again, she says that. And she says, sorry, she's sorry, sorry for anyone who's offended. And people just think, oh, she's just saying that because people are mad at her. Sure. But it's also possible she posted it not thinking it was going to be a big deal. In her ignorance, thinking that it wasn't going to be a big deal. It's not a big deal that she watched it, but it is kind of a big deal that she spread it on her Twitter. Uh, not to draw attention to the theory per se, but to possibly have some people from the Sandy Hook situation who might be her fans come across that video from one of their favorite role models and then kind of be like, oh, are you serious? Like, we're having a hard time with this as is, blah, blah, blah. So, like, I get it. She shouldn't have posted it. But I don't think she should be crucified over that, right? I don't think that incident is a, that big a deal. How many of us make mistakes like that all the time and, and retweet a fake rumor for crying out loud? That could be damaging to people. Um, I know that you know a fake rumor isn't on par with like actual human life, but I'm just pointing out that, I mean, I, is it really that as big a deal as people made it out to be? Um, it should have been called out. It was called out. And you notice how she hasn't posted anything like that since? Hmm. Is it possible she learned from her mistake? I, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. It, it seems to me Ronda Rousey learned a lesson, but we can't forgive her for it, right? It's impossible for us to move beyond that and let her move on with her career. We have to keep calling her out for Mortal Kombat 11. Um, so you scroll down a little further, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't stop at her sounding like a corporate bullshit apology bot, which, what, what is she supposed to say? What is anyone supposed to say in that situation? Especially when you have someone like this that's just, I'm, I'm just going to hate you because I hate you. Uh, so then takes her comments regarding Fallen Fox. Now this one is interesting because her comments didn't seem like she was against transgender. But she worries about competition. Okay, Which, again, she, is in, she was, in, was in a competitive sport. And I think worries about this are legit. Just like people who worry about people taking steroids. And do they have an advantage, right? Uh, so she said... Um, so it goes on to say, you know, uh, Fox is the first openly transgender MMA fighter in the sports history. She did undergo a sex change reassignment surgery in 2006, uh, but received pushback against the idea that she could fight against other women. USC President Dana White stated that he didn't believe Fox should be allowed to fight other women. So again, the president of the UFC that she was part of basically said that, you know, that it's probably not fair because she grew up with male hormones. And because of that, she has a better bone structure, better muscle structure, because factually, men generally have better structure than women when it comes to that kind of stuff, because testosterone helps build muscle mass way better than estrogen does. It's just a fact. Uh, so, again, I can understand Dana White's stance on that. It's, it's, a, it's a very tricky thing to dance around, because, yes, she's a woman now, but... But she wasn't always a woman. So is it fair to women who were always women to face off against someone who was a man who became a woman? That is, I think, a legit question. It might sound, seem screwed up, but the situation's screwed up. So again, I think it's a legit question. But again, this isn't about Dana White. It's just brought up as kind of background into the fact that, you know what, this is actually good by this author, that, hey, you know what, her, uh, her stance isn't unique. Dana White, the president of the USC, agrees that, like, yeah, it might not be fair. 
So it says, former NFL defensive back and MMA fighter Matt Matrone called Fox a lying, sick, sociopathic, disgusting freak. Now, I don't know why this is brought up. Again, trying to create outrage culture. Um, like MMA fighter Matt Mitrione has nothing to do with Ronda Rousey. I what? It's again outrage. Bringing up something completely irrelevant to what you're talking about, um, as if that's what Ronda Rousey is saying. Ronda Rousey didn't say she was lying, that she was sick, that she was sociopathic, or that she was a disgusting freak. Ronda Rousey didn't say any of that. Here's what Ronda Rousey says. Ronda Rousey declined to fight Fox, insisting that her fellow fighter would have a physical advantage in the ring. She can try hormones, she could chop her pecker off, but it still doesn't seem, but it's still the same bone structure a man has. That's like literally scientifically true. She's stating scientific facts. But that's the same as calling him sick, sociopathic, and a disgusting freak. No, words that Ronda Rousey never said. Um, it's an advantage, and I don't think it's fair. She also commented that she was glad the UFC didn't straight cut uh, Mitrione for his comments. So, um, again, that's the part where you can maybe get on Rousey because she's like, look, you know, that they didn't straight cut Mitrione for his comments. I don't think that someone having bigoted, sexist um, comments like that means that they should no longer have a career. Especially if it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with their career. Uh, they should be reprimanded. They should be maybe fined. They should maybe be sidelined for a while. They should be maybe made to take a class or a course. But I don't necessarily think that, you know, someone saying that, uh, when, when, when I hear someone like Matt Matrone saying lying, sick, sociopath, the disgusting freak, I think that's someone who needs to be educated. Um, and a lot of people look at that, especially the people who are transphobic or are uh, not transphobic, who are who are trans, basically, um, are going to say, hey, look, this is we deal with this crap all the time. And that's not right. But the only way to combat that is education, not let's just backlash hard and um, make this person feel like crap. Like, no, let's educate them. You got to remember, e even even the, the gay movement, like it's it's new for a lot of people. I didn't grow up in a town that had a lot of trans trans people, a lot of gay people. So, like, even for me when I'm around it sometimes, it feels a little strange because I've not grown up around it. Someday I'm hoping it doesn't feel strange. But that's the thing. I didn't grow up around it. And so there's a lack of education on this stuff. And nobody seems to be understanding of that. People grow up a certain way. And with certain beliefs, and there's no understanding of that of that method, and how it might not even be their fault. That's just the way they were raised. They were raised that changing your sex is wrong. I don't I don't agree with that, but I still think it is something to be talked about and discussed. Not something that we have to hate on somebody for saying, "Hey, I'm glad that the person wasn't straight cut from from MMA." Like, okay. Anyways, getting back into the article. I think the star is that Ronda got the pronouns right, I guess. Again, insulting Ronda Rousey for basically saying that, hey, she stated a bunch of medical facts that she doesn't think it's fair because the bone structure and everything's the same as it was when she was a man. It's a fair point to be made. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that stance. Um, you can disagree, and I'm not going to fault you for disagreeing, but she stated a medical um, a medical fact. And that's why she's not comfortable fighting her. Okay, cool. Why can't we just let people not be comfortable sometimes? It's okay to be uncomfortable. But we're telling people it's not okay to be uncomfortable. Really? So I didn't write anything sooner because I thought that maybe I wouldn't have to be the one writing this. As this piece was in the middle of being edited, I've been writing this for over the course of two days. My peer, Daniel Redno, at Waypoint, published an article about Rousey's involvement, which is heartening. Still, I wish it didn't have to be queer folks speaking up. Where are our allies in this? You know what I want to do? Play Mortal Kombat 11. But I would have to be wild to consider it. I'm not obligated to let bygones be bygones. And I'm just not going to. Rousey's presence in Mortal Kombat 11 is unacceptable. Sonya could have been played by any number of capable actresses. But instead, NetherRealm stunt casted someone whose very presence makes many of my friends feel completely uncomfortable playing Mortal Kombat 11. So I'm going to kind of end uh, the article there. I just want to note that, again, I cannot relate to the, the queer community. I cannot relate to the trans community. I cannot relate to you at all. But what I can say, if you are part of that community, and please try to hear me out, 
that when you don't grow up in that community, which Ronda Rousey did not, you don't understand what it's like to be us. And growing up in a largely straight, you know, where everyone stays the gender they were born with kind of community, which is what a majority of us grew up in. Um, at least a majority of people like me, the white privileged or whatever you want to call us. And when, t- when you understand how we were raised, you know, Catholic, Roman Catholic, uh, you know, gay is wrong, you know, sex before marriage is wrong, this is wrong, it's a sin, it's this, it's this. and it was beat into your head for 20 plus years. You need to start understanding why these stances exist and not always blame the people, but try to educate them. Okay, Ronda Rousey has not said anything like these two things that were brought up since she said the the original remarks. You want to know why? She was educated on it. After she said that stuff, people came and educated her. Why can we not forgive that? Why are we unable to forgive these transgressions? Why do we have to still be raging about this stuff years later? Later, Ronda Rousey's not even an MMA fighter anymore. Heck, she's not even in the WWE. She's pregnant and having a kid, and she might never fight again. Why do we need to be angry at her still? She didn't come over and kick your dog. She didn't come over to your house and slap you in the face and call you disgusting for being queer or being a transphobe. She didn't even say she hates people who are trans. She did. She said nothing that was sexist in any of her remarks. But we have to be mad about it because of her beliefs? Because she doesn't believe it's fair competition when scientifically it's not fair? We have to be mad at her belief that we should not just get all your information from one source and should consider all possibilities? We should be mad about that. Yes, she made mistakes. But I firmly believe she's learned and grown from them because she hasn't repeated those mistakes. This isn't a repeat offender. Okay? This isn't someone like we're going to be talking about next, who is a repeat offender, but still kind of goes into the whole rage culture thing. So let's dive into the next piece. And we're talking about Andrea Renee and Greg Miller, two of the people I respect most in this industry, kind of funny games. Andrea Renee does a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Greg Miller is known for kind of funny games, kind of funny, uh, you know, you know, all that stuff. So I used to be a former employee at IGN. Let's, let's look at what he has going on. Um, and what the rage culture is over those two people right now as they are at, I think, a Borderlands event or something right now. Um, So here's the rage, and it comes from none other than Reset Era, a place that I've been banned from from simply saying that I don't think we should just be angry at everyone all the time. Uh, (laughs) Here you go. All right. So this is posted by Lab Guns. I don't know who it is, but... um, they put up a, the, this this kind of funny games thing, this, mine, this Minecraft drama video, and it's an hour-long podcast-style video that, that they do. You know, it's a kind of fun, funny games daily video. Um, and Andrew Renee and Greg Miller had a chat, and they talked, and they talked about two specific things: Notch, the person who created and founded Minecraft, um, who's a billionaire now after he sold it to Microsoft, and then they talk about PewDiePie. You guys probably all know who PewDiePie is, uh, specifically because, um, hello, he's like the biggest YouTuber on the planet. All right. And there's been a lot of controversy around PewDiePie, of course. Um, And lots of controversy around Notch, specifically after he sold Minecraft. Uh, But let's just go over this post. It says, on yesterday's episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily, Greg Miller and Andrea Rene discuss the Minecraft drama, which is centered on Microsoft announcing that they were not inviting Notch to the 10-year Minecraft anniversary because of his comments and opinions. That's what, that is what Microsoft did publicly state. Uh, they also discussed PewDiePie shutting down his subscription campaign. He did. PewDiePie said he doesn't want people doing the sub to PewDiePie thing anymore, uh, specifically because he was being associated with uh, things like the the Christchurch shooting, and uh, he like that's things have gone too far. Uh, so he shut that down, and he. Waited what I felt was a pretty appropriate time to not make it about him. He kind of just said, said a few things on Twitter and then let, let it be, um, I, which I think was best. Because if he had said something right away, everyone would have been like, oh, you're making this about you. When he's trying not to make it about him. Anyways, reading more into it, it says, uh, they also discussed PewDiePie shutting down a subscription campaign. Uh, what proceeded from this conversation is thorough hand-waving. 
uh, downplaying and giving benefit of the doubt to two of the most well-known racist transphobes and anti-Semites in the gaming industry. So, right, so basically, uh, opinions on these two people already made up. Now, I'm not going to defend Notch too much. Um, he has been pretty consistent in, the, in his thought process on things, uh, at least on Twitter, and I definitely disagree with a lot of his stances. Um, I don't know him personally, so I'm not going to call him transphobic. I'm not going to call him a racist or a bigot or, or anti-Semite or a white supremacist or, or whatever, uh, but I will say that he has a lot of opinions and stances that uh, paint him in that light, so I'm not going to defend him too much, uh, but... I am going to defend Greg Miller and Andrea Renee because, again, this is who people are mad at. It's not just being mad at Notch and PewDiePie. They're mad at Andrea Renee and Greg Miller, two of the most respected people in this industry. So it says, Greg points out that Notch has ostracized himself with his Twitter comments that include transphobic statements, heterosexual pride day, and it's okay to be white. I mean, it is okay to be white. It's also okay to be anything else. Again, this is why I state that, like, not everything is necessarily racist and transphobic, but again, there's a pattern of behavior, and I'm not going to defend Notch here. It just, okay. You know, I can understand, though, um, you know, Greg points out some of this stuff. Andrea suggests that Notch is willfully choosing not to partake. He doesn't want to be there because he doesn't do public events. Not because Microsoft axed him due to his comments, which th there's probably both true. Notch doesn't like doing public events. Uh, that's well known. Um, but I'm sure Microsoft axed him for the same reasons. You know, Andrew Renee is probably just providing, um, you know, it, like it says Andrew suggests. So, so basically it's, if Notch even was invited, he probably wouldn't attend. That's basically what it comes across to me. Andrew is saying, Hey, you know, maybe Notch willfully chose not to go like, okay, it's, it's possible. Uh, Greg points out that indeed in the press statement, Microsoft announced they cut him. And, it, and then rereads the statement. Andrea tells Greg that it's not a fair extrapolation to make from that statement. Andrea adds that to her, it would be disappointing at Microsoft part if Notch expressed interest in wanting to be involved, and Microsoft said no thanks. So what she's saying is that Notch hasn't publicly or, or, or said anything about wanting to be part of it. So if Notch said he wanted to be part of the 10-year anniversary, and then Microsoft said no, um, then it, it, she fully believes in Microsoft's statement. What she's thinking is it's easy for Microsoft to say what they say because Notch isn't asking to be involved in the first place. I think she's saying if Notch did ask to be involved, she thinks Microsoft wouldn't say what they said. That seems to be, I, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think it's a fair assessment. I mean, you know, then, you just be, then they would just be outraged at Microsoft, of course. But um, I don't think there's any reason to be outraged at Andrea for daring to suggest that if Notch asked Microsoft to be part of the event, that they wouldn't let him be. Like, I I don't know how that's something to be mad at Andrea about for offering an alternative opinion on the situation. Anyways, um, let me see here. Uh, she adds to Microsoft saying, his comments and opinions do not reflect those of Microsoft is a disclaimer made for everyone that speaks on behalf of Microsoft, which is true. Uh, anyone that speaks on the behalf of Microsoft that isn't directly representing their brand in an interview, it is always stated that their opinions do not publicly reflect those of Microsoft. This has been a phrase that Microsoft has used over and over again with various employees. So, um, again, she's just bringing up facts, you know, and, and, and an alternative opinion. I don't know why you should be mad about that. Again, this isn't my, my saying you need to like Notch. Go ahead and hate him. But hating Andrea over that? Okay, let's go on. Andrea refers to the transphobic and racist things not mentioned on the Twitter as wacky, because they are wacky. I mean especially when you disagree with it. It's pretty whack. I think we can all agree it's a pretty whack statement, Notch has said. Uh, and it's really Notch putting a line in the sand saying he doesn't want to be involved in Minecraft. And it's just Microsoft making themselves look good by saying, yeah, we don't want to be involved with him anymore. And that's it, all drama. Okay, alternative opinion. Uh, Greg said he Googled why do people hate Notch and got the top bullet point in his OP. Uh, and then he went, what? I don't understand enough. Can you give me more? So he had an open conversation. He, he wanted to know why people hated Notch. Then Andrew, Andrew Renee said Notch's tweets were taken completely out of context, and we don't need to analyze his tweets right now. Obviously, it's an hour-long show. They're not going to take all day to analyze the tweets right now. But so far, that kind of seems that seems like a fair assessment. I mean, if you dig into the tweets further, some of the tweets are definitely overblown. Some of them are or uh, spot on in terms of people's reaction to them. So, uh, again, I... I'm not someone who is a big fan of Notch, so I'm not going to sit here and defend him. Uh, but I, I will say that I don't think Greg and Andrea said anything bad there. Based on this summary, and I did watch the video. I did watch the whole hour. Um, there's nothing in there that seems to be offensive to me anyways, just because they're offering some alternative um, options for the Notch situation. I don't, I don't really 
why be mad at Andrew over that? Okay, let's get in, let's get into the PewDiePie stuff now. Um, which, by the way, I'm going to publicly state right now, and maybe I'll lose subscribers over this. I don't think PewDiePie is racist. I don't think PewDiePie is um, sexist. I don't think he's homophobic. Um, I don't agree with all these general opinions. I think he is um, a person who grew up in gaming culture. He's a person that has made a lot of mistakes. And because of the way he grew up and because of being a YouTuber and being this online gamer and doing all these over-the-top reactions with horror games and all this stuff, I think what happens is you end up um, being more ingrained into that culture. And an unfortunate part of that culture, and I think all of us are living in denial uh, when we say when, when we act like, you know, oh, that it doesn't need to be this way or it's not that way. Go ahead and play games online and tell me how much inappropriate stuff you hear in a given match. How many times the N-word is dropped? How many times racist, sexist, and homophobic slurs are tossed around? And if you ingrain yourself in that culture for decades and decades and decades, part of it is bound to start to feel normalized to you and make it feel like it's okay to say certain things. Like when PewDiePie dropped the 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 what a effing N-word, like, yeah, it sounded really bad and the hard R, but like he hears it all the time. It's normalized for him. And I think we have this lack of understanding of how people can make those mistakes when things become normal. It doesn't make it okay. What PewDiePie said is not okay. What PewDiePie's extremist death to all Jews because he didn't think it would actually work is okay. It's not okay. But we need to understand the culture that PewDiePie grew up in. And when you don't consider the culture and you're just saying it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how you grew up, it doesn't matter what you've been around, you should be better and be above all of that. You know, what you're asking for is an individual person to basically be the solution to everything that's wrong in the gaming world. Everything that's wrong in the world. And that's a lot to put on somebody. A lot of expectations to put on somebody who is just a person who grew up playing games on the internet. And he's privileged, and he's white, and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know how many times. Like, he's made more stances and more and more charity acts and more things to help people, of the, of, to help the, the, the people that are struggling uh, than he has done bad things. But that all gets ignored because it's all just a publicity stunt. Well, if it's a publicity stunt, how come nobody realizes it or knows about it? So again, I don't think PewDiePie is like the worst person on the planet. I, I need to state that before going into this. I don't think he's like the, I think he's someone who's made a lot of mistakes and he still makes some mistakes like we all do. I said, I am uncomfortable when I'm around people who are trans or people who are gay. Does that make me um, a transphobic person? Does that make me someone who hates gays? No, I just didn't grow up around it. So it takes me a little bit to kind of get used to that culture. And people don't seem to be understanding of that. Anyways, going on to this, is on topic of PewDiePie. Greg also mentions that some of the things um, done, like PewDiePie saying, uh, paying two men to hold up a sign, I talked about the death of all Jews thing, and using the M-word on stream, is beyond his comprehension. So Greg openly admits that he doesn't understand how PewDiePie thought that was okay. All right, so Greg is saying, no, that was not okay. That was not cool. But he did note that PewDiePie apologized, which factually happened. This was followed up with a why does the internet got to be so complicated when people get successful? Uh, a fair question. Because when because when people become so successful, mistakes are made, things are brought up from the past. I worry that the bigger and bigger my channel gets, one, one word said wrong on a stream and the world's going to hate me. Probably this video, the world's going to hate me, right? Like, I hate the term precious snowflakes. I think it's really derogatory. But it's one of those things that there's a lack of understanding, a lack of forgiveness in this world. The internet hate machine just doesn't stop. And we expect people to get better by continually hating them. Um, and it was Andrew responds because everyone wants to be part of the zeitgeist. And she added she's glad PewDiePie apologized. I think that's a fair take. Is it not true that once the internet hate machine gets going that people don't just join in to join in? You're telling me that's not a thing that happens? Are you telling me that people don't like the pile on? Because it happens all the time. We see it all the time. None of us know PewDiePie. None of us know Felix. Right? We haven't met him. We're not friends with him personally. So let's just pile on because he's made some mistakes. 
Imagine if everyone piled on you in your life for every mistake you made the public doesn't know about. And don't act like you're innocent and never made a mistake. Don't act like you never had a thought in your mind that might have been a little racist or might have been a little this or might have been a little that. I'm sure it's happened because we grew up in a society that thinks that way. Anyways. Um, so then it goes on to say, um, you know, um, she then removes blame from PewDiePie for all of the racist, hateful, and anti-Semitic antics uh, he encourages to place it on his community and followers and a few degenerates. Um, to be fair, PewDiePie's community, uh, a select part of that community, is white supremacist. A select part of the community that follows uh, PewDiePie is pretty bad. And that community does help give PewDiePie a worse reputation than he probably deserves. Um, it's just, it's just a fact. And I, I think... Because PewDiePie's following is so huge, it's easy for him to not see it. Because if he's so focused on one part of his community, he might not notice everything going on around his community. Because if he did, he'd never have time to make damn videos because he would spend all day reading crap on the internet. Uh, so I think it's entirely plausible that he wasn't really aware of how many of those people followed his channel. Um, but, I mean, the guy's got 90-plus million subscribers. What, 95 million? Like, yeah, of course there's going to be a, a, a significant group of bad apples in there. There's probably a group of bad apples in my following too, and I don't have 95 million. Does that mean I'm a white supremacist? Oh, maybe by the end of this video you think I am, but I completely disagree. Um, anyways, Greg says that because he doesn't know Notch or PewDiePie personally, which is a point I bring up too, he doesn't know what their real motivations are, but he says that PewDiePie should have closed the subscribe movement since his name is associated with it, which he did. Uh, and he's glad that he was silent on the shooting I agree. So he didn't make the shooting about himself, absolving any, him of any blame. I I agree. I agree with Greg. That was a good decision by PewDiePie. Uh, Andrew says PewDiePie gets crucified for his mistakes, his missteps, and an internet lynch mob, forgetting we are all humans and make mistakes that PewDiePie has been a target. She said he does a lot of great work, like raising money for charity and does a lot of good things. Because he factually does. He is targeted. He isn't ever forgiven for any misstep he makes along the way. He's not allowed to be human and make mistakes. That's the problem with living our lives in the public eye. We're not allowed to be humans and make mistakes and learn from them. We have to be crucified for everything. Even though I think some of the things PewDiePie has done, his, the mistakes he's made are deplorable, it doesn't mean that I think he's a giant BOS. He's just a person like the rest of us that's living and growing and learning. But you're saying that because he's an adult now, he can't? People can't change? People can't learn? Oh, but he's made similar mistakes of this. And I've made a bunch of mistakes in my life, too. You know, I go ahead and dig through my past and crucify me then. Because you know what? I've made so many mistakes. And I probably will make many mistakes moving forward. Because that I'm a human being. No understanding of anyone's situation. No getting to know someone personally. Let's just destroy people for, you know, who can believe apologies anymore? Even though they never repeat that exact same mistake again. <sighs> Anyways. Um, Greg says uh, he's leading with those two stories, but he doesn't know anything about the stories and the histories. Uh, not that he's trying to be ignorant, but because it doesn't pertain to his normal everyday life, which is true for him, I'm sure. Uh, but he wants to have a convo about what is going on, probably because it's just it's a big conversation because there's so much outrage. Outrage culture. Uh, Andrea said that she wants to support PDP because he's the heart of YouTube, which is which is basically true. Um, he is the person that represents us, like just everyday people. Um, he is basically... Whether you like it or not, a representative of us, um, especially against big corporations, because most of us don't have the following to stand up to big corporations. Uh, kind of funny subscribers uh, describe the N-word incident on stream when someone kills him on a stream by accident. Greg wonders if that means uh, PewDiePie does use it. So Greg does question if PewDiePie does regularly use that term, just not when he's uh, recording. Then Andrea said some people were adding context on why PewDiePie used it. It was because he was Swedish and doesn't understand the connotation of that word, which is it, that that is entirely possible because I don't under you know, it, there are cultural differences that I am not going to be able to explain because I didn't grow up in Sweden. Um, she added that she had heard from a lot of Europeans that they use that word. Both her and Greg shout, "That's bad." That's not cool. That's not cool. You should stop that. She said PewDiePie apologized for it, and he's not going to do it again, so it's okay now. I mean, again, 
no understanding of backgrounds and culture and where we grew up, and I can't expect the internet to do that. Um, going on, you know, yikes, the notch defense from Andrea, I expected better, blah, 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 not surprising. Uh, Greg sure does use the, well, I don't know much about this topic card. Nobody should be surprised. Another one bites the dust. Uh, just a whole bunch of hate. This thread, 27 pages in, is a bunch of hate. And this is even after Greg came in and kind of like said he's sorry and, um, and, and, and all this stuff. Like, it's just hate after hate after hate after hate. And I'm here to tell you something, Internet. I'm here to explain something that sh should have been taught to you a long time ago, or at least by now, after all the years of throwing hate on the Internet, um, hate in your life. Hate doesn't defeat hate. If you truly think that Greg Miller, Andrea Renee, um, Ronda Rousey, PewDiePie, Notch, and you know a zillion other people are bigoted, sexist, blah blah blah, blah arseholes, and um, all this stuff. You know that attacking them with hate is not going to teach them anything. In fact, attacking them with hate is going to sort of vilify their opinions. You need to attack hate with love. If you want to win, if you want to change people's minds, if you want to educate, you can't attack hate with hate you are being just as bad as they are but they're the ones being sexist they're the and you're the one writing them off because you're unwilling to educate them you're unwilling to show them compassion you're unwilling to give them chances and forgive mistakes and talk to them you're unwilling to have that conversation and because you probably think they're unwilling to have it too but you don't know until you try i think that we live in a world where because of the internet, things are really dangerous right now. We are in a world where nothing we say is ever private anymore. Nothing we say or do or the mistakes we made are able to be kept under wraps. And because of that, everyone is judged for their mistakes and not for everything else. And when you only judge someone for one thing, whether it's their acts of charity, whether it's their mistakes, whether it's what they do on daily videos, when you only judge someone on one aspect of their life, you aren't seeing the whole person. You aren't getting a complete picture of who that person is. You are just seeing one side and you're unable to see the rest. And what ends up happening is it leads to you being completely jaded. It leads to you having no forgiveness. Is that a world you want to live in? If you're someone who has grown up, and again, I don't understand what it feels like, but grown up in hate, grown up in everyone putting you down, grown up living on the streets, grown up um, being insulted and looked down upon as less of a human being for your sex or your, you know, being gay or uh, being bi or, you know, whatever, whatever the thing, you know, your race. If, if you have been held down by that your whole life, you've been hated on your whole life, don't you know how that hate feels? So why are you responding with hate? How is responding with hate going to defeat it? It's just going to make them hate you even more. So stop it. Try to be friendly. Try to understand that maybe they grew up in a society that was built that way. You're not going to change the narrative by fighting back with hate. So yes, Ronda Rousey is in Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, PewDiePie is still the largest U video maker on YouTube in terms of just being an average person making a YouTube video. Yes, Greg Miller and Andrew Renee might have opinions and stuff you don't agree with. That doesn't make any of these people pieces of crap. What it makes them is human. And we're supposed to apologize for being human? We're supposed to say sorry that we make mistakes? Sure, be sorry for your mistakes but you make them too. It's kind of, I'm going to bring up a religious quote, and this isn't that you need to be religious to understand what it means, but Jesus Christ said at one point, uh, you know, let the, those of you who have not sinned cast the first stone. I don't necessarily think you need to believe Jesus is real to understand that lesson, to understand that, that message. It's, Look, the person made a horrible mistake. The person made many horrible mistakes. But have you not made mistakes too? Your mistakes just aren't known publicly. 
your mistakes are kept under wraps. You are anonymous on the internet, so maybe there's no way to connect it all back to you. We need to do better, gamers. We need to do better as people. We need. This is the kind of stuff that honestly makes the gaming community look so bad. This is the kind of stuff, not just the bigoted and the sexist and the racist remarks, but our reaction to those bigoted, sexist, and racist remarks. When we show an unwillingness to forgive and only want to have outrage, we end up perpetuating the problem. Be part of the solution. Don't be just a, a part of the problem in a completely different way. I'm tired of outrage culture. I'm tired of it. I'm, ti I'm tired that I can't go anywhere. I can't go on YouTube. I can't. I literally can't go anywhere in the video game sphere and not see outrage culture. Be mad about the games, right? Think that it's crappy Mortal Kombat has, you know, microtransactions or whatever. But really, we got to pick up the Ronda Rousey stuff. It's starting to not become about video games anymore, and I'm really hating it. Anyways, uh, I'm Nathaniel Robojevs from Nintendo Prime. If you're still here at the end of this video, I appreciate you sticking out this extra long video. Um, kind of emotional for me, too, but... Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next one.